Okay, so this is going to be a quick video on how to find the slope given two points that are on a line. So what I have over here to the left is the actual slope formula. It's um, it's actually pretty complicated looking, but it's it's really easy to uh, to use. But let me just go to quickly uh, refresh what the slope is, and then we'll do this example. And um, uh, if you're looking for more example problems, I have a lot more on my YouTube channel, uh, so certainly that will help you out. Let's get into this particular example. Okay, so um, a common question would be find the slope of the line. Now the slope has a abbreviation, it's a small m, okay, uh, the variable m stands for slope. So the slope is some sort of fraction, okay? It's, it could be any number, but typically we see it as a fraction, let's say like one half or negative three halves. Uh, technically it could be any number, even a decimal, but way we generally see this is as a fraction, okay? So a common question uh, would be the following. Find the slope of a line given uh, these two points that are on the line. So let's say this point here, 5, 8, is on this particular line. And then we have another point over here, negative 3, 1. Now, again, the slope, just so you understand it, this number is a is a measurement of the angle of the line or the steepness of the line. So just a quick review, lines that increase from left to right will have a positive number as their slope. Lines that fall this way from left to right will have some sort of negative number. So if you can see this visually, you, you'll know what the sign of the slope is. So when we do this problem, clearly we're, we should end up with a positive number. If we don't, then we did something wrong. And then a couple two, uh, two other um, things that you want to be aware of. Lines that are flat, horizontal, have zero as their slope. And then vertical lines have a slope, what we call undefined. And I'm not going to go into that now. You, there's uh, other videos on my channel here that will explain that. But you do need to understand you know, what the slope is. If we're going to calculate, you should understand you know, what the number means, right? So <laughs> let's get into this. Okay. So how do we find the slope of the line? I'm actually going to calculate it, and then I'll explain the formula, because the formula sometimes is more complex to explain than actually just doing it. Okay, so to find the slope of the line, what we're going to do is we're going to do um, some subtraction uh, problems in a fraction, a numerator and a denominator. And let me just show you what I, I'm talking about here. Okay, so... Let me set up a nice little fraction here with some colors. So here's our numerator and here's our denominator. Now, the numbers that I'm going to use to subtract in the numerator are going to be the y values of these points. Okay? So the y values, remember a point on an xy line is x comma y. We call this an ordered pair. It's a pair of numbers that have a particular order. So the second number, okay, in this pair is the y's okay so we need to put the y's up here so let's put that up there that'll be our y's and then the first number will be the x's that'll be down here okay now i'm going to kind of cheat here the y y and x the y's we refer to as the rise of the line because the y-axis moves this way and then the x-axis or the x x's are referred to as the run okay and i'm kind of going pretty quick here because this is really aimed at you, let's say, trying to figure out your homework, get ready for a test, you know, just to be able to do a problem correctly. And then you can learn a lot more about the, the actual mechanics of what you should anyways. Okay, so let's get back to this problem. So um, I guess my question to you is, can you identify the Y's out of these two points? All right, well, hopefully you said 1 and 8, and you would be correct. Okay, so what we're going to do is going to subtract them. I'll just, I'm going to start with this point. Okay, I'll take this eight. That's one of the y's, and I'll subtract it, or I'll subtract one from eight. So I have one minus eight. So now we have to do the same thing, but just with the x's in the bottom. Now here is where I need you to pay huge, huge attention. I really focus in on because if you don't get what I'm going to tell you now, you're going to get these problems wrong. Okay. This is very easy to do, but this is where 90% of the students make a mistake. Now, trust me, I've, I've graded thousands and thousands of papers over the years. So number one mistake students do is this. They say, okay, I'm going to subtract the Y's, um, 8 minus 1, and then I'm going to subtract the X's. Okay, And you would be correct. However, the order in which you do this um, needs to, to um, uh, be the same. What do I mean? What do I mean by that? So here... 
I started my numerator up here with 8 minus 1. I started with this point's information, okay? I then, okay, must use this point, this point's information in my numerator. So in other words, I'm going to subtract the x's, which are going to be 5 and negative 3, okay? But I, here, because I started with this point, I can't start with negative 3 minus 5. Do you understand that? So this point's information came first, so I'm going to have to put this 5 down here, okay? because the eight came first, and I wrote it first. Okay, so the five needs to go first in the bottom, all right? And I'm not try I'm trying to use not over overly technical terms here, numerator, denominator, rise and run, et cetera, because I'm just trying to get you to understand this so you get these problems right. But you do, you should, like I said, um, do further review after you're able to do these problems so you, so you really understand this, okay? So you, there's no shortcut in that, but let's get you to get the right problems first. Okay, so, so that's um, mistake number one. 90% of the students who get this wrong typically make this mistake. They get the order wrong. So now it's five minus what? Well, the other x is negative three. So it's five minus a negative three. Now this is another place where students really mess up. They, when they have negative numbers involved with the slope, you need to put that negative three in parentheses, okay? So it needs to look like this. So let's just stop and pause here and just to take a look at the setup again, okay? So you're gonna create a fraction. The numerator is going to be um, constructed of your y values, okay, of the points that you're given. In this case, it's eight and one. Now, I could have went one minus eight, and that would've been totally fine, okay? But if I've done that, okay, I started with the ones information, I'd also then have to start with that same um, order pairs information down at the bottom, negative three, minus five, all right? So hopefully I kind of um, you know, made that clear enough. So if you can stay away from that mistake, you're gonna be almost perfect. Now the next thing is, the next mistake that typically the students make is with the negative numbers. So here in this example, I have five minus a minus three, okay? Gotta be really careful. You set this problem up just like this, and then we'll go in and actually kind of work the problem. Now. Another mistake students do is very common is they'll put the X's in the numerator in the Y's in the denominator. So just remember Y over X, rise over run. Okay, so now this is a good little pop quiz for you. Can you actually calculate this real quick? Might wanna pause the video and, and calculate this and let's just test your ability to work with positive and negative numbers. All right, so eight minus one would be a positive seven and then five minus a minus three should be, well is, hopefully should be for you, five plus three. A minus a minus three is a plus three, okay, which is gonna be eight, so this is gonna be seven over eight. So that's our slope, okay? M would be equal to seven eighths. So that's how we would uh, actually write the, uh, the answer. So uh, we can get into more complicated uh, examples where we're using fractions and decimals, etc. But you know, you don't want to do those problems until you understand how to do one basic problem. So this is a good example that will, uh, if you understand this, will keep you away from doing, from making the most common mistakes. Basically, let's review them real quick. Three common mistakes. The first is the order, okay? Got to make sure you use the right order. Whatever point, whatever um, points information you start with, that's what you got to start with in both the numerator and denominator. The second thing is be careful when you're working with negative values in your slope formula. And then lastly, don't confuse um, y over uh, the rise over the run. The y's on in the numerator and x's in the denominator. Okay, so a lot more math videos where this came from. If you like this, please subscribe to my channel, and leave me a comment, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try to uh, also refer you to a playlist. A lot, I do a lot more videos on slope as well. And um, anyways, thanks for watching and have a great day.